Today, they will decide on the kind of Valentine's Day team dessert that I will prepare. So, we play it a game where they will randomly pick a dessert item. And the exciting part is, they will be blindfolded when choosing from a selection of dessert curated by pastry chef. And I will imitate the dessert by just looking at the picture and will prepare my own version of it without a recipe to follow. Let's make magic happen. I actually think this one quite suitable because it looks quite presentable for Valentine's Day as well. So I, I think I pick a pretty good option. Uh, let's see what happens. Okay. I'm so excited. I kind of like raspberry. Mm, I, I guess I like it too. Awesome. You are hesitating. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. okay, so let's get started. Alright. Let's head out to buy some ingredients right now. Let's go. Alright. We will film step by step, showing how to make all part of the dessert, starting with meringue cookies. You can even use them as decoration on cakes or on cream tarts. If you are a cheese lover, you will never return to store-bought ricotta cheese after you have learned how to make super creamy ricotta cheese at home. Because all you need are just 3 ingredients and you will be done in 15 minutes. If you are also a mole lover like me and want to create beautiful and tasty dessert, this video is for you. It is very easy. All you need to do is to boil the ingredient and freeze it in the freezer. Okay, let's start. Here are the items that we'll be using. Now, let's separate all the egg white and egg yolk. I'm using my comfort tools to separate the egg yolk. You may use any method to separate the egg yolk too. You just have to ensure that all tools are dry and very clean. Egg whites will not beat properly if there is fat or yolk residue anywhere. Pour the egg white into a stand mixer with the service attachment. Make sure the missing bowl and whisk you are using are dry and very clean too. Whip the egg white until they are foamy. This means that they should be white and bubbly, but not yet starting to hold any sort of pigs. Add the cream of tartar to the foamy egg white. Then, mix on low speed until the cream of tartar is mixed in. Next, whip the egg white to soft pigs. The egg white should form a pig that drip down gently rather than sticking straight up and down. Once you reach the soft pig stage, you are ready to begin adding the sugar. Now, you can add the sugar a spoonful at a time while mixing the egg white at medium high speed. Add a spoonful of sugar very carefully so it gets slowly incorporated. If it adds 1 to 2 minutes between each addition before adding more to make sure that it really is well mixed in. Now, you can add any flavoring extract that you like. I added vanilla extract, but any standard extract will work. But remember, to avoid oil-based flavoring, as the oil will cause the egg white to deflate. Continue to whip the egg white until they are very stiff. When you remove the whisk from the meringue, the white stand up straight and don't droop down at all. This is called the stiff pig stage. The meringue should also not feel gritty or creamy from the sugar. Alright, finally, it's time for piping. If you want to add some color to the meringue, Gently fold in chow food coloring with a spatula and stir until the color is even. Then, 
place the marine mixture into the piping bag. You can use a regular round tip for a round kit shape marine or use a star tip for star. As you can see from what it looks like, if you want lot of bridge or French star tip is what you are looking for. Pipe the marine on the parchment paper. They won't spread much, so you can put them fairly close up. I am making about 3 quarter inches, but you can make larger one if you like. You will just want to adjust the cooking time and keep an eye closed on them in the oven. Once the marine are baked, turn the oven off and let them cool completely in the oven. Going from hot to cold room can sometimes cause your marine to crack, so gradually lowering their temperature is best for keeping your marine looking good. The basic of making marine. Here are some tips and tricks to ensure your marine come out perfectly every time. Wondering how best to separate your egg white so they don't get yolks in them? If the egg is not too fresh, the egg yolk will mix with the egg white after you crack them on the bowl. Make sure you get a fresh egg and crack it one egg at a time before separating the egg white. The egg will be at its best at room temperature, not chilled from refrigerator. So if possible, let them sit out for 20 to 30 minutes at room temperature to warm up before making meringue. Super fine sugar or extra fine sugar, it is called caster sugar in UK. And it's just granulated with sugar with a smaller grain. It's typically used to make drink and steamper syrup, but it's also useful in baking and candy making because the smaller grain of sugar dissolves faster. In meringue, super fine sugar dissolves very fully and produces a meringue without a grainy or greedy texture. If you can't find a super fine sugar, you can either make it yourself by using regular granulated sugar in a food processor until it is finely processed, or by using regular granulated sugar and be very low and methodical when adding the sugar to the egg whites in the recipe to avoid any creepiness in the final result. A too hot oven is a prime cause of cracked marine. Cracked marine are not cute. If you have plans to bake again or really want to make some cute marine, get an inexpensive oven thermometer and keep it in your oven to monitor the temperature. This way, even if your oven runs too hot or too cold, you can adjust the temperature accordingly and maintain a consistent temperature for your meringue. You can find cream of tartar is most bakery shop or supermarket. It acts like insurance to ensure that your meringue really comes out well. It is not optional because you don't want to spend time making your meringue only to end up realizing that you should have added cream of tartar. But if you can't find cream of tartar anywhere, cross your finger and proceed. Crack marine are probably the most common problem people run into, and there are multiple causes behind it. The most common reason marine cookies crack include an oven temperature that's too high. Get those oven thermometers. Being cooked for too long or being overheated or having too much air incorporated into the meringue mixture. Fortunately, a cracked meringue still tastes great. It's just a cosmetic flaws. Your meringue cookies are done when they are crisp and hard to the touch and can be easily removed from the parchment paper but have not taken on any color around the edge. 
No, please don't refrigerate your meringue. Humidity is the natural enemy of the meringue. Meringue have a naturally short shelf life and are best enjoyed within just a few days of baking them. Store them in an airtight container in a dry place and you may get up to 5 to 6 days from them. It is possible. Chewy meringue are usually caused by under baking or by meringue naturally absorbing moisture from the air over time. To try and creep up your baked meringue, put them in a 200 degree Fahrenheit oven for 10 to 15 minutes. After baking, let them cool and test them. They should be crispy again. To create these pretty pastel meringue kisses, all you have to do is prepare different colors of meringue batter. In this case, I had white, light pink, and pink. You can have a mixture of your favorite color like pink, blue, purple. I squirted the different color of batter into a larger piping bag fitted with a round attachment, trying to space the color evenly around the sides using the spatula so they would all come out the opening together. Pipe the batter into loop on a baking sheet and you are done. Everyone loves these classic meringue cookies. They are lighter than air, super crunchy and naturally fat free. I like to make mud small about half to one inches but you can experiment with making larger one if you like. Just be sure to adjust the cooking time accordingly. Homemade ricotta is super creamy, perfectly tangy, and ridiculous easy to make at home. Best of all, it is ready in as little as 15 minutes. You will never go back to store-bought ricotta after you learn how to make it at home. Most simple cheese are made with just milk, salt, and acid. The difference comes from how hard you heat the milk, which acid you use. Lemon juice and white vinegar are most common, and how you treat and strain the curd. Be picky about your milk. Homemade cheese is a place to be very choosy about what sort of milk to use. Buy the best quality that you can afford, and make sure it's not Ultra pasteurized and that super high heat used in ultra pasteurized denature the milk protein, which means they won't respond properly to the acid and therefore won't curdle correctly at all. No curdle equals no cheese. First thing first, prepare your cheese clothes for straining. Place four layers of cheese clothes over a fine mesh seed. Then, mash the seed into a mixing bowl. Place four cups of milk into a heavy bottom pot. Then, place over medium-high heat. Heat the milk, stirring occasionally to prevent scalding until the milk just barely boils and reaches a temperature of about 170 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature is important. Please remember to put in your reading thermometer. The trick to getting ricotta just right is heating the milk to the right temperature. Too hot and you end up with harder curves. Better sweet to a panier type cheese to cool and your cordo will be too soft or small. I found 180 degree Fahrenheit to be the perfect temperature for soft but substantial cordo. If you have a thermometer, heat to 185 degree Fahrenheit. If you do not have a thermometer, just need to reach a stage where there is a lot of steam, little bubble close to the edge of the pot and the Formation of a slight film. It should take about 20 minutes to get to this stage. As soon as the milk reaches room temperature, remove the pot from the heat. Add the salt and white vinegar. Give it a quick stir to 
had set aside for a few minutes until the coat separate from the hui. Pour the content of the pot over the prepared cheese cloth and allow the cheese to strain from the hui for anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes. Less time will result in creamier cheese, more time will result in a drier, thicker cheese. Add another minute or two and it will be perfect for serving warm on its own, drizzled with honey. Oh, so good! Last step, taste the cheese for seasoning and consistency. Add more salt if desired and if you find the cheese too firm, stir in a bit of whey until it reaches the perfect level of creaminess. Homemade ricotta can be stored in the fridge for about 5 days, but I think it's served best warm straight from the clothes. Place the ingredient in your food processor bowl. Process until very smooth, about 2 minutes. Refrigerate for about 1 hour before serving. Serving for 1 third cup dessert bowl or ramekin. Heat up the raspberry puri and once it reaches 40 degrees Celsius, or 140 to Fahrenheit at a mix of sugar, pectin, and xanthan. Bring the mixture to boil and add the rehydrated gelatin and pour into the molding of your choice. Put into the freezer. Finally, when frozen, unmold and use accordingly. Allow the raspberry powder to cover half the plate of decorations, followed by the raspberry molding in the center. So you have a guide to place the meringue and smash the biscuit. After everything is plated, time for the ricotta honey cheese to be placed on top of the raspberry molding. If you do not like to include cheese in your dessert, you can always use vanilla ice cream as a substitute for the color. So I'd like to give you a little gift before the dessert comes. Everything can be eaten. These are made of fabric. I know like those rose petal tea or rose. No, we will have dessert. This is not dessert. This is meant to be flowers <laughs> and it's meant to look good. Cool. Cool. I really uh, wish this was kind of So here's the gift and I hope you like it. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Wow, this roll is so beautiful. We can dive to this first as well. Again? Shall we? Okay, you may start first. I'll start first. I'll start. Okay. Ready? Yeah. What was that? Okay, so um, I have one more surprise for you, of course. Okay. Yeah, of course. Okay. 
while we are waiting for our lovely lizard, I thought I prepared something special for you. Would you like to have a look? Thank you. But this looks so elegant. You like it? Yeah. I'm going to open this up. Here's a little surprise. may not be much, but I hope it's something different for you. How do you find it? It's a little bit more design on the wrapper, and this is so cool. I've never seen any wrapper that is so many, that has so many designs. Mm, yeah, I'm glad that you like this experience. Hey, and you actually you know, jar inside, and even the candle that's so cool is like a portable candle. Mm, yeah, I hope the experience is special for you. We have our lovely dessert specially prepared. We have this really good friend who looks like a maid. Look like a maid. Who wears a maid costume and prepares this box. This dessert prepared method is really look very cool. This doesn't really look like what makes a design. You know, it's so cool, like desert in a raspberry forest. Oh, this reminds me. Let's dig in. As you wait for our dessert, I have a special gift for you. This, no worries, okay? Um, I'm just gonna open this up so that we can have a look. Look at that. How do you like it? Cool. What are you doing? Flowers? 